with all these changes coming to the arena store is the blitz store next also we're talking about more bugs bottlenecks some tips for the doom raids some tips for dark dimension and if you're ready for all of that and a lot more of your questions from the mailbag find that like button let's go smash it Valley flying. Oh, what is up, Valley Maniacs? I am Valley Flying. Hopefully, you are having a great Sunday. Man, Mike got a little tongue-tied there. Hopefully, you're having a great Sunday, and hopefully, you're ready for the Sunday edition of the Q&A Mailbag with your questions from the Discord channel. Now, if you want to get your question potentially featured in an upcoming episode, make sure you are a member of the Discord and go to that Mailbag channel. Leave your questions there, guys. But before we get to all the questions, it is time to pay some bills. So big shout out to the sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends. I want to ask you, have you been waiting for your chance to annihilate a demon lord or crush an evil ice golem? Well, your wait is over because now you can do that and more in Raid Shadow Legends. Now, believe it or not, my buddy Saito here, he's actually excellent for taking on that ice golem, but he can't do it alone. As you can see, he's lacking some confidence. He's lacking the skills he needs. He's going to need your help to show him the ways of Raid. And oh my goodness, look at him go. Look at the armor. Look at the sword. And whoa, whoa, Saito, watch where you're swinging that thing, brother. And Saito is one of these champions that was recently added to Raid. And what makes him so strong against these bosses is this passive right here. He's going to ignore 7.5% of the enemy defense every time he attacks the same target enemy in consecutive attacks or turns. And it's going to stack up to 30%. Yeah, that is why he's so strong. That is why he needs your help. And this month, Raid is adding even more epic and legendary champions and a second version of the Doom Tower with two new brutal bosses, the Celestial Griffin and the Eternal Dragon. I can't wait to take on these bosses. And with all these updates and new features, it's really a great time to start playing Raid. And if you're a brand new player and want to get a head start, all you need to do is click on the link in the description or scan on my QR code and in your account, you will receive the free Epic Champion Jotun, who is an excellent champion for taking on the Doom Power bosses. And you'll also get 100k silver, 50 gems, and three ancient shards so you can summon some awesome champions of your own. And all of this treasure is going to be waiting for you in your inbox right here, guys. But you got to act quick. It's only going to be available for new players and it's only available for the next 30 days. It's that easy, guys. Just click on the link in the description. And I'll see you in game. Yeah, so big shout out to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. But without further ado, let's get to all of your questions for the mailbag, guys. Boom, first question. Hey, Valley, any word when the Silver Surfer alt will stop crashing the game on certain devices? Have they acknowledged this is a problem? Do they plan on fixing it? Will this be a new bug we have to deal with forever? A la Black Bolt. Ugh. <laughs> Honestly, it may be. Uh, it's not as it's frustrating not be able to use the best character in the game for fear that it may crash and I lose the energy spent on that node. So, uh, there is kind of a crappy workaround that you could use right now, and I've been using it ever since he was released in the game. I've been playing on low graphics mode. Yes, unfortunately, my blue stacks is on low graphics mode because it crashes the game. My iPhone, I play on low graphics mode because it may crash the game. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, they, they have, uh, they are aware of it. It's been spent, sent to them many, many times. Uh, as far as anything public, I don't know if they publicly addressed it, but I don't know. Hopefully they can figure out what is going on. I mean, this is similar to when Vision was crashing the phones back all the way in year one. I think it's just too, Silver Surfer is just too powerful for all these phones and devices. So hopefully they do get a fix because it's kind of ridiculous that this shiny new character that they have all these offers for, uh, most of them are bugged offers. Hopefully they get this uh, working correctly and uh, so we can actually use this character in the normal graphics mode. But yeah, uh, temporary solution, brother. Just uh, low graphics mode, unfortunately, is uh, how I'm playing right now. What up, Valley Flying? Enjoyed the war video at Philosopher. So did I. It helped me out and uh, very, very smart individual. What would you say is your most favorite hybrid war defense and offense team? Recently started using a hybrid team of Zemo, Loki, Hella, Grenadier, and Red Skull to punch up 300k against a boost at Emma Rodders that still had secured an engineering bonuses. That bonuses. That is crazy. Uh, let, let me know that you're if you could post another screenshot in the mailbag video. I'm curious to see what the build up of, of these characters are, how strong they are. And I guess my favorite uh teams. I guess can you call X Factor team? If you can, then X Factor. 
because it's only a four person team but uh yes so uh, if you count x factor it's gonna be x factor right now a lot of times my favorite teams is these newer teams because uh, i have less experience playing with these and testing out the mechanics so usually it's the newest team but if you don't count x factor i know that's kind of a cheesy answer because it's not technically a hybrid i guess i would have to go with a, a, a high hydra ish type of team and i guess this is the hydra 3.0 because i don't know if it's really a hybrid team either uh drax red skull zemo grenadier winter soldier winter soldiers not doesn't do much grenadier finally got him up to be that highest damage character on that team so finally i'm able to use this team i'm um, not really using too many other hybrids outside of that uh i, I had a certain one with x factor and hydra uh before you know we had the full x factor and before i built up my grenadier and I guess the only other hybrid I'm using right now on defense is the mix of Supernatural and Hela, and that does very well against Wave 1 Avengers. As far as defense, uh, I, the only one I'm really happy with right now is has Silver Surfer, Black Bolt, Yo-Yo Crystal, and Coulson. So those are my favorite hybrid war offense, hybrid war defense teams. Let me know your favorites, though. I, I, I do want to see the makeup of this team because 300k against the boost of Emma Rodders, that is, that is very impressive, brother. All right, Valley Flying, this isn't a question, but can you give Mobile Big Bo Mobile Boomer a big shout out from all of his view viewers? Congratulations on his engagement. Yes, congratulations, brother. Congratulations. Uh, yes, I, I, they, they work. They work so well together. It's, it's, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know if you guys have had a uh, noticed a shift in his consistency and content ever since he got with Cat, but it's been very, very uh, consistent with all the stuff. So uh, she, she, she's, uh, she's pushing him a lot, which is good. Which is good um valley another potential add to your list of things i didn't know i needed all right i, I like the one last week i don't know if this is this gonna be another segment because this would be a pretty cool one all right um when do you think about a comprehensive what do you have what do you think about a comprehensive list of gear with uh with the counts that way you click on uh what you're low on you can get a notes quicker than going through the characters any thoughts uh this would be very very good especially uh, with the way things are right now and no API in the game and having to use that Mantis bot if we want to get uh, all of our data onto msf.gg. A screen like this would make it very easy and uh, maybe we won't need to be exporting that data as much if we had everything organized in-game. Uh, this is something I would want. This is a nice QA change. Uh, Q not a QA change. A QA is not existent. It's going a quality of life change. <laughs> um and uh yeah I, I would like to see it hopefully it doesn't distract from any of their bug fixes that's going on because i know they're spending so much time fixing all these bugs in the game and i wouldn't want them to get distracted with that uh hey valley wanted to see if you know or have heard of other people or content creators that uh how necessary is ebony maw in the legendary nodes of dd4 do you know if anyone is finishing nodes without him uh, always keeping up the great work man all right so i'm not in legendary yet i'm in the final nodes of cosmic so uh, I, and I'm going in with Ebony Maw, so I wouldn't have first-hand knowledge of this question. If anybody has been in without Ebony Maw, um, let me know. I, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything, but I guess it's possible. Um, all of these nodes, especially, uh, you know, even these hard nodes are possible to grind through, to get through, even without the best characters. But, um, yeah, Ebony Maw is really good because he does percent base damage. One of the characters there. You're going to have Phoenix and Ebony Maw doing that, so... I'm, I'm assuming that these are going to be very, very hard. But uh, my question is, if you're not taking an Ebony Maw, why? I guess maybe because you're using other Mystic characters or maybe you don't have them unlocked. Uh, and then who would you take in instead of Ebony Maw? That, that would be my question back to you, brother. But uh, yes, if anybody's went through, the, let me know in the comments because I've not seen any or heard of anybody going without Ebony Maw. Uh, so I, I think he is necessary. Uh, but again that's that's all from what i hear i'm not in those uh, legendary nodes yet. all right as of today and this is uh important because this was on the 14th of april 36 out of 56 on silver surfer milestones completed all of them every day i don't think i'm gonna uh, complete the milestones did they miscalculate you run into similar issues so uh i i think you're way ahead of the schedule uh if you are on the 14th of april 56 out of uh, 36 out of 56 I think you're ahead of schedule. I think someone in the live stream calculated that there was like 580 points carry over. Like if so, if you miss stuff, then you can then you can miss about 580 points if you're doing it every day after that. So uh, yeah, you're you're well ahead of pace. You're not you're not gonna if you if you maintain the pace that you got, uh, were on to get to that point, you should be fine. Uh, you're you're ahead of you're you're more than halfway through all this stuff. So 
you, you should be good. So keep pushing. But I think I think there is a surplus. Uh, if, if anybody knows the exact number, uh, I believe the number popping into my head is 580 for some reason. But if anybody knows the exact number, let me know in the comments. Uh, I am I correct? Whenever a character gets reworked in the game, uh, they're updating Blitz battles. But if they were part of an existing raid, they leave the old version in the game. Um, so Blitz Blitz works a little differently. Blitz is based on a team that someone's actually taken into Blitz. And then when you face it, that enemy team that someone's taken in there is going to be based on your roster. The stars, the, the red stars, the gold stars, the gear on those characters is based on what you're taking into battle that team. So it's a, it's a little weird with Blitz, but I guess they are uh, based on somebody's roster. So they're, if a rework happens, it's a uh, one-to-one. And some of the older content though, it, it does get a little tricky because sometimes they get updated in raids. Sometimes they don't. Uh, which which is good, uh, especially on PVE content if they don't get upgraded. Uh, if in, if that is indeed the case, what happens when you clone a character like Night Nurse that has recently got reworked? Is the old outdated version or is the new version with boosted stats and abilities? Ooh, I have not tested this. So if anybody knows the correct answer, uh, let me know in the comments. I will give you my assumption, but of course it could be wrong. Now, if you want to see what exactly the nodes have, if they have their... Uh, current version or an older version msf.gg does have all these uh nodes for every the pve content we have in the game uh so check that out if you want to know specifically but all right so what happens with a clone so if you're using mr sinister i'm assuming you're going to get the correct version on your team uh because a lot of these uh raid boss uh, raid enemies are kind of hard-coded to have like weak weaker stats or strong sometimes power more powerful stats you guys know about the dodge of spider-man and vision and does uh, the revives of groot if you guys have been playing this game for long enough but uh they do sometimes they do have weaker stats uh like outdated versions so i'm assuming if you clone a character you're getting the correct version on your team but i could be wrong on that if anybody knows exactly for sure let me know in the comments though that is that is a very interesting question yo valley and champ can you do me a solid and raise something with scopely these alpha raid orbs are trash I have all the tunes at seven stars, so it would be called the ultimate food orbs. They've been trash for a while. I mean, most of the times there's a nothing of value as far as a ranking characters. And I think they do that on purpose. A lot of times I think what they're looking for is specific traits. So one of the nodes I think has brawlers. Their other has like mystic characters. And they're supposed to be updating these characters as these characters fit these traits, as they're new characters that fit these traits come to the game. So Shatterstar is in one of these orbs and i guess he fit like a brawler tag on uh in that so because that's i guess uh they, they need they i think they should extend it so characters like white tiger like you mentioned moon knight like they mentioned giving some more uh like a mutant characters it would be good I, I i would like to see them change it up and not just use specific characters but actually have one unfarmable character in each of the nodes in each of the raids or for each of the raids so for the Gamma Raid, we have at least one character that we can get that, that nobody has access to. There's no way to farm the character. Uh, same thing for the Alpha and same thing for the Beta. I would like that. I would like to see that change come. Uh, I, I will be pushing for that uh, when I talk to the devs next time I talk to them. But, I, I, I you know, with all these suggestions, guys, uh, I don't know how much they listen to and actually implement. But it's it's at least uh, getting that in their, in their minds hopefully would cause them to... Uh, make some changes to these orbs but they, they've been crappy for a while brother they've been crappy for a while and i i hope they get better or at least at least at least make a little value as far as character shards because you're right they're, they're just ulti ultimate shards anyway i hope all is good with your uh with you your fellow aussie marvel strike face gamer please tell drew to get on to the thuis new and be a true aussie all right i will have to write that down for all my messages i gotta give to drew next time i talk to him uh, what is up, brother? I have a very quick question. Do you think Scopely planning on any releasing characters to the Blitz store, specifically the more popular, better characters, have an abundance of Blitz credits? And it's been a very uh, fairly player-friendly way of releasing characters. Hope all is good with you. So, uh, yeah, so let's let's talk about the recent Arena Store changes with this one because I think that will be the... That's kind of an example that we can expect. Um... I think I think they're going to do similar things like they will when they eventually rework this store uh, to be like the arena store. They'll they'll give some things that are beneficial. So maybe reducing the cost for these older characters, 
making it more player friendly, making kind of catch up mechanics. Uh, there's already an orb in there, and then they put characters in there like Domino, like Rescue back in the day, and made it a little less abundant. And uh, I don't know what they're gonna do with other other characters. Maybe maybe increasing the cost for uh, newer characters as well. The the Blood Store is kind of a tricky thing uh, because of the the that's the place that you get your war currency. So I hope I hope they don't do too much with the Blood Store. They should release more characters from here. I don't know if they're gonna change it, but uh, I think I think the indicate the big indication is what they recently did to raid the arena store. So I think I think they will be making some changes. And this is all speculation. This is not anything I've heard. I haven't heard of a Blitz store rework, but you know they they did add that orb a while ago. So hopefully it's not very painful when they do make these uh, changes. But I, I do see it coming, yeah, especially with this. Uh, Recent changes to the arena store. All right. Yo, Valley, have a possible solution to this strike pass controversy. So I play quite a bit of Call of Duty multiplayer as well as MSF. Call of Duty has a battle pass similar to MSF battle pass where they have a free and a paid lane. But in Call of Duty, they uh, put new guns and character skins and such every uh, season rather than gear and character shards. But in Call of Duty, they put new guns and anything that will put somebody at a possible advantage in the free lane and everything in the paid lane is cosmetic and bonus stuff so what in the uh msf passes they put all character shards in the free lane along with other small things that be supplement the paid lane with other items that would still entice people to buy allowing to be more free to play uh sorry for the long post keep on smashing keep on writing these uh good suggestions uh this this would be very good this would be very 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 player friendly and uh, it may be actually too player friendly for uh, Scopely to implement. Uh, for me, looking at that strike pass, the only thing in value that I ha that I see in there right now is those Silver Surfer shards. There's nothing, none of those orbs, none of the extra cores, none of those uh, just normal resources, the training orbs, the gold orbs would entice me to buy that for 20 bucks. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe if they put something like skins in that lane, or is that's how they introduce skins in the paid lane and they put all the shards in the bottom lane that may be enticing enough players to uh, purchase that? I mean, if, if it's just cosmetic changes, that, that maybe, maybe, if, if it looks cool enough, uh, that, that would be something cool. Uh, I would like to see them do something like this. I mean, or, or like the other games have where you could buy certain things with power cores, like buying their pass with power cores outright. So if you bought one pass, the next season you're throughout that pass if you did everything playing the game you would have enough course to buy the next pass there's a lot of things they could do to improve this and make this more player friendly only question is will they is it going to make them enough money and i think that's that's kind of the, the thing that they look for is is these changes are these player friendly changes are they going to make us more money down the line is is getting that goodwill throughout the community going to make us more down the line or should we just increase our prices and so far with Fox next, Scopely, and now with Boundless, it, it looks like uh, it's going to be just to try to get as much money on the front end as possible and hopefully not anger enough people so they don't leave the game and people there's enough people around to keep spending. So that's that's kind of what it seems. Hopefully, hopefully they do take this suggestion. Hopefully I'm being too cynical. Hopefully I'm wrong. And hopefully, hopefully they're hopefully they get more more player friendly. That's, that's what I would like. Uh, and I think a lot of players would like that. And hopefully Scopely, they, it aligns with what Scopely's interests are as well. Uh, all right. Valley, I've been doing real-time arena with X-Force and recently, a couple times, I've been uh, running into a fight where Deadpool revives and doesn't appear back on the screen. Then if Domino uses a grenade ability and auto-freezes, uh, anyone who's having a problem or is this a known bug? Also, where should I send the screenshot? What it looks like? So is any screenshots I would send to uh, customer support and probably copy Cerebro as well. Uh, any, any kind of bugs, especially ones that you can recreate like this, uh, send it off to the devs. I recently encountered a bug. I have the, I have the footage of it. And uh, yes, it's, it's, it's something similar to this. It's where Mystique is going in and cloning a character. That, that's the last one on the field and it just freezes. So there's something there's something weird with this this cloning type thing where, where you need a character to uh synchronized with another character's abilities i don't know if that's something that just broke in this past update or so that's something that's been broken for a while but uh it sounds like sounds like something similar is going on as far as uh, what the ai is doing in the back end i, I this again I, I don't know coding and stuff this is just guesses as my part but it sounds like something similar is going on with uh not having the character there or or in your or in the 
case of Deadpool, thinking the character's not there and then causing a freeze. So yes, yeah, screenshots, send off customer support. This should get you your uh, RTA energy. I guess it's not RTA energy, but uh, yes, it's, it's happening to me at Blitz and stuff. So if it happens, if it happens in other game modes, uh, make sure you send it off to customer support. Get whatever energy you lost back. But yeah, it's bugs. Hope <laughs> QA QA is very important. <laughs> G'day, mate from un down under Valley. I'm sure it's a. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a known issue, but uh, doing a mantis scans on the war orb since they have all the gear in them and found out that there are no purple titanium alloy in the purple war orb uh said put in a support tick and got back a generic response saying they passed it up the ladder but what else is missing from that orb that should be there uh i didn't even notice that the purple titanium alloy was missing i just assumed it was all there uh i guess we'd have to go in line by line and see what is missing uh coordinating with the msf.gg your gear so uh that's that's kind of crappy i mean it's the attention to detail they they need to work on their attention to detail the folks over at uh i guess i guess it's i don't i don't know when it's officially changed their, their name to boundless but we'll, we'll call them scopely for now but the folks over at scopely they need to they need to switch their they need to switch their qa department or increase it or something because all these all these little things that are missing and, and we were talking about these orbs from those greek raids earlier uh, not updating characters as soon as they're added is uh, not cool. I think actually I think Shatterstar would just added, but there, there's a time that people were not getting added for a long time, and we have to write to the devs and be like, hey, but why isn't this character added? He fits that requirements of that orb, but yeah, this stuff. Also, what state is Drew from again? Because I'm in the Sunshine State, QLD, and I can't ever recall uh, hearing the term frothy. Have a good one, mate. Uh, I don't know. I, I I keep forgetting to ask him for some reason. So hopefully I remember the next time to ask him. I know that's been a popular question. Where is Drew from? I don't think he's ever said that where he's from. So I got to remember. I got to remember next time to ask him where he is from. Uh, thanks for all the great content. How you approach things on your channel. First time posting. All right. How about this change to RTA? Make it a war room simulator. Stop blocking characters and put us in rooms. But mirror what we face in war. Let us try to attack then defend or choose which you prefer get some idea of how our new teams do against opponents in uh war setting uh, i don't know about this for rta but i would like this uh just because i i want to be able to test out war teams uh without having that pressure of oh i need this battle to be exact i don't have any room to test because this is a this is a real war i would like to be able to test that but uh i don't know i don't rt there's so many issues with rta i don't know if that would uh that would improve it or make it uh more grindy or less grindy i don't know but all right question can you talk about how you got started the streaming and content creation or to make a video so i've talked about this a few times on different mailbag videos but again usually on the mailbag videos and not its own videos so a lot of times it does get lost in these mailbags but uh yes if you guys want to see a separate video on this let me know i don't know if there's enough content to talk about for a whole video but uh started making content back in the day when i was a personal trainer had a fitness channel nutrition and was doing that and just kind of as a joke was or not as a joke but just as something as a hobby i was playing video games and noticed hey maybe maybe i can also monetize that channel and get some money so i can spend money on purchases and uh that that game was uh marvel's avengers alliance 2 that game folded and uh it wasn't about uh, then i started playing future fight then when i started playing this game i'm like hey this is a brand new game maybe i should make content on marvel strike force when it comes out so i started making that and uh eventually the channel got bigger and bigger and bigger and got into streaming and all that and that's that's kind of how the channel started and it is where it is now and uh i'm, I'm glad that you guys enjoy the content i'm putting out and uh that's gonna keep, keep changing stuff upping the production quality for you guys but that's that's kind of how it got started hope your family stays well Good luck keeping up with little A and little G as they get older. Oh, thank you, brother. I think I'm going to need it with those two. <laughs> all right. Hey, Valley. Thanks for all the entertaining and, and fun content. One of the first thing I do when I wake up each day is to refresh your YouTube page to see what's new. That sounds like sounds like a great start to the day, brother. My question is res with respect to gold. I'm in a major gold crunch, so it's freaking expensive to get my characters to 70, 75, 80 in order to reach gear 13, 14, or 15. Uh, I, you know, I, you know, this reminded me of uh, that Battlestar Galactica when they said fracking all the time instead of the the real word. <laughs> anyway, uh, what are the best and most efficient ways to get gold as quickly as possible? If I'm willing to spend some money and get gold quicker, how should I do it to get the most bang for my buck? 
Um, all right. So the, the best place that I get gold, I think, is from those gold orbs that I get just through doing raids. Uh, there's also a lot of gold that you get from the uh, objectives that you get daily. And then once in a while, we get these uh, these challenges. And then every month we get the what is the, what is the one with gold? The payday event, the Merc payday event. So those are where I consider my main sources of gold. I usually don't buy the training, the, the gold orbs, but I guess if there's something that is a really good value, whatever, if it's over what you place on the monetary value for one gold orb, then buy it. That that would be the best thing. But I think I think when you're spending, if doing all this stuff, getting all these uh, gold orbs and gold from different sources, if you're spending about a 1 million gold a day, you should have a surplus. I notice when I'm spending about a million gold a day, I'm getting a surplus of the gold orbs and uh, it kind of adds up so if you limit it to that i know it sucks uh i have a hard time doing it sometimes myself but if you really want to uh maximize your goal just kind of limiting it to about a million and then if we if we ever get a gold milestone character again then then you you'll be set for whenever we need this stuff but yeah it's 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 it, i think we need more gold and i think they should raise the uh minimums in the gold orbs actually frankly all of the orbs uh, right now so that's that's my take on it and uh yes just i guess it's not it's not i guess it's not a great way to get gold but uh that, that's what i do and I, and I seem to have a surplus so if you limit it you're budgeting your gold and uh, managing your resources correctly i think you should get there as well but if anybody knows a way to get a lot more gold like specifically targeting getting gold then let me know in the comments but that, that's what i do hopefully that helps but i i know it's not really the answer you're looking for uh, so me and Alliance are going to run our first test of the Doom Raids Monday morning. Congratulations, brother. Uh, we're looking for different techniques to take on the raid. Is this the best uh, technique to have everyone go down one lane? I hear others do this until everyone's roster is set to handle their own lane. So uh, if you're going down one lane, you guys need to 100% that lane to get to 30%. So uh, with eight people, probably should be able to do that. But let's go into the game right now and check out uh, the, the raid map for Doom. And if we check it out. And if we look at uh, what the map is showing, we have this first section right here. Uh, and this this is kind of a harder lane because you're getting this skill lane so so tough, or uh, so early. This is probably going to be the best lane. So if you're going to do something, uh, you're going to get the skill towards the end here. And then this is, this is the other lane here, and you're getting skill right in the middle. So what my alliance does, we got four people on this lane, and then four people on this lane. And then we're going... We get to about here on my lane and this lane if they're really pushing they could get all the way up the skill so uh stronger people probably here the not as stronger people or or people with really good symbiotes and bio uh, and character or symbiotes and mutant characters could go here but uh, this is going to be your main one right here right at the center uh with a tech mystic and uh that's the that's the that's what i recommend instead of uh, one lane but of course you got to do what works for your alliance and i guess the best way to figure that out is by testing so try these things out hopefully it helps uh and uh let me know which one works better for you brother the going all in one lane or doing the zero four four for the four doom lanes all right next question hey hello over there valley hope you're doing well smashing it mmsf hope you are as well uh, with all the recent resource crunch that most of us are still suffering from and the rate at which new characters are being added to go along with it, even with some of the changes that have happened and have yet to happen, I still have a few ideas for some changes. Love to hear it. All right. Raise the number of attempts for the daily chance from the current three to at least double permanently and make further temporary increases and a start and end of the month. Uh, adding a sim button if you had all the three highest tiers simming all three attempts in one button would be helpful for one press as well that that would be a nice quality of life change just sim, uh, just getting all of them instead of sim 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 uh as far as doubling the attempts obviously that'd be very player friendly i would like that as a player i don't know if scopely would go for that though just giving out extra resources but uh yes I, I i and i don't know what that would you see the economy of the game but obviously as a player i would like that but uh, i think there's other other things just than uh this hey this is better for my roster that we would need to look at just the uh, balance of the economy before i would recommend that but it, it it could it could be good it could be good have a row age for guaranteed of 13 14 and 15 uniques the first slot for one piece second slot for two pieces third first for three pieces and uh every slot have something different the existing gold cost would already make us decide carefully how to spend gold 
and how much we currently get every day and somewhat frustration uh, frustrating at any given time at a supply store only seeing refresh uh only seeing a bunch of resources that I already have so yeah that that would be good i would like that uh again a little too player friendly than what i think scope player would go for but i like that if they would at least guarantee to 13 guarantee to 14 and guarantee to 15 in the supply store maybe adding another row with just those guarantees would be cool uh yeah you know i, I got you got we got to be careful about uh suggesting things that are too player friendly because you know scopely is not going to go for it at that point but things that have balance you know maybe they could just uh bring uh introduce some things like that because you know they, they want to make money as well so if it's just too generous they'll they're i think their rationale will be like hey how are we going to make money on this i mean they've shown that in the past so uh i would like it i would like it though and complete sweep but increase the minimum reward from all orbs i think i think that needs to be done every time they raise a level cap so we've got to the level cap uh and raise the level i think i think global launch was at 65 and then we got a level cap increase to 60 then we have one to 75 and then now we're at level 80 so we've had three that i could remember but there may have been uh, maybe forgetting a bunch uh but yeah that that means at least three times these things should have been rebalanced so I think I think every time they do a level cap increase, they should rebalance all the orbs and look at the entire economy of the game uh, because things get more expensive. And, but that's my opinion. Uh, that, that could script the economy as well. But I think that this should at least be looked at and uh, discussed and discussed publicly and giving some transparency with their discussions. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Hey, hope all is well with you. Last week, you answered a question to help me immediately. So thank you. I'm glad it helped, brother. So with players broken down into tiers, new, mid game, end game. I like to think of late game and end game as two different classes personally. Uh, in many of your videos, you're described uh, mid game as starting uh, once you three star that hello note. I think I think that's still a good placeholder for mid game. Of course, these are all just subjective terms. This is just kind of uh, categories to uh, clarify where someone is at a game. But as far as their actual hard definition of where one starts and another ends i guess is is very subjective and every anybody can have their own definition because it's not a uh it's not a hard uh thing so as a mid game player when would you classify players as officially entering the late end game in some ways i feel i'm close but i have a long ways to go thanks so uh for end game now you definitely need ultron you probably should have passed dark dimension three at this point and you're in at least Ultima 7.5. I don't know if uh, you need to be in Doom to be considered Endgame, but and then uh, for your Greeks in at least 4.1. So that, that's what I would consider. Maybe that standard's a little too low. Maybe I gotta go back and relook at some of these nodes and things like that. But again, this is a very subjective definition. If you have a different definition that's probably a little more accurate, let me know in the comments. But uh, just off the top of my head, I would say you're in you're in some of the tougher uh, uh, raids. So uh, I, 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 the Doom may be a little too tough to be considered that. So uh, Ultima 7.5 at the minimum and uh, maybe 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 4.2 for the Greeks. I don't know. But then doing, doing pretty good in Arena. I would say top 250, making sure you're around there. If something's Arena is something that you prioritize. Uh, but yeah, let me, let me know your definitions. Let me know your definitions. It, it, may, be, it may be way more accurate and, uh, better, and uh, relative than mine. Uh, hey, Valley Fight, hope you and the family are doing well. Same to you guys, brother. Uh, really grateful for you as a content creator and the power and flow and keep on rocking. Uh, totally butchered that, but yeah, I get the point. Thank you, brother. Uh, question. I'm a low, mid-tier level player, free-to-play player, using struggling with gold and training mats to upgrade a team. Please recommend it as to which team you think I should upgrade first. Pimtech, Fantastic Four, X-Factor, Axemen, and uh, I guess you don't have Jubilee because you're looking to uh, unlock Pimtech with Jubilee. So Axemen without Jubilee, and especially with uh, actually your Bishop is very very strong. Uh, wait till you wait till you get Jubilee though. You can start upgrading these guys now. You're not gonna have a lot of use for that, but I think the best one here is gonna be the Axemen. Ax X Factor, obviously the Dad Bros are good, but based on your current gold and red star levels you probably could hold off on them for a little bit but i think they're going to be very very important uh down the road they are very important right now on war in war uh fantastic four is kind of a weird team they're, they're decent on war office they're decent on war defense they got some synergy with doom they got some synergy with silver surfer 
but I think I'm going to go with your recommendation. Go for Pimtech and not necessarily building them as far as their gear, but getting their stars, getting their stars up. You don't even need to level all of them except for Ghost, but getting the stars just so you could uh, unlock Jubilee. I think that's the best way to go. And as far as gearing characters, I think long-term investment, you're going to find putting the most gear into the X-Factor and Axeman uh, are probably going to be the best uh, investments long-term for you. A uh, suggestion, I know the devs are not the most optimal, but it would be great. We've been able to see inventory for all of our gear, green, purple, orange that we're running low and have a surplus on. That's the second time we've had that recommendation or that uh, request. So maybe that is something that we should be pushing for. I know I know the Mantis bot does that, but you got to do that manually. Check it out on msf.gg. But yeah, if it was in-game, I think it would be very, very uh, helpful for a lot of players, including myself. Uh, next question, uh, Valley Vine. What key fours do you recommend for Shuri and Night Nurse for DD4? Let's go take a look at him in game, guys. All right, so taking a look at the legendary Shuri. I got two key fours on her. The first is on this passive right here. It is going to help giving her speed up to all for herself and all Wakanda allies. That's pretty much all it's going to do because you're not using her rage, you're using her dark dimension. So you could probably skip this one. The T4, the speed up on spawn is nice, but uh, if you're if you're crunch for T4s, uh, you could skip that one. This one I think you should do though. Repeating the uh, the healing four times instead of three, getting a little extra flat base of healing. But I think the ultimate for Shuri. And if we go to Night Nurse and take a look at all of her T4s, where is she? Here she is. Boom! I actually have them all done, but for Dark Dimension specifically. I kind of like, there's actually a lot that I like for uh, Night Nurse. So when this character or any Shadowland ally drops below 50%, max health, uh, defense up to that character, and she's getting more speed. That is pretty good. Uh, this one, I think that cooldowns is good. So starting with four energy, I think this is very, very uh, important. Although with Dark Dimension and the cooldowns on these skills, uh, that one may not be as important. But outside of Dark Dimension, very, very good. And with this one, clearing three negative effects from the most injured ally and all adjacent allies and healing. I think this one is a must, must uh, is as far as the new Nightner. So uh, special, uh, all uh, passive is very good. Ultimate, for Dark Dimension specifically, it may not matter. But for all your war battles, I think this is a very good one as well. So you may want to do all three. But if you're starved for T4 resources and are using them very sparingly, Ultimate and special is uh, what I would do for Night Nurse, brother. And let's move back on to the questions. Hey, Valor, recently managed to beat Doom 3-6. Oh, congratulations, brother. And once Jubilee comes back, I have all the legendaries unlocked. Now I'm conflicted on the direction. I can't decide if I want to work on some other good teams. I've skipped like Merc, Supernatural, work on prepping a team for GD4 or Prioritize, getting more stars on other legendaries. Any advice also? Uh, planning on focusing more on DD4 than DD3. I feel like that's a smarter long-term goal. So Dark Dimension 3 is going to give you a lot of that orange gear. Uh, and it's going it, to, it'll help you for Dark Dimension 4, but at what cost? You're going to have to gear these characters up for, you're going to have to gear a lot of characters up to 13, uh, or 14, excuse me, for Dark Dimension 3. Some of which you're also going to bring to Dark Dimension 4. So you could kind of hit two birds with one stone there for your Dark Dimension 3 characters. Focus on the characters you're planning to build for Dark Dimension 4. So that's what I would do. Now, when building teams, uh, this is the order that I've always prioritized in. And uh, if you if you have a different order, then uh, you may prioritize differently. But Arena is uh, the number one priority. You get That's your biggest source of power cores. You're going to get those Arena store credits, which apparently are going to be way more valuable with these changes coming. Hopefully... Uh, they're moving characters through this arena store very quickly and it won't be negative as a lot of the community is expecting and I think a lot of people that have played this game is kind of expecting for a while but uh, hopefully hopefully it's not it, they move the characters through but arena very very important just for the power cores alone and then these uh, resources they, you're going to need them more I think for the, the new store the new changes to the store. Uh, after that is raids. Raids is another big source of daily material. These are things you're doing every day. Arena you're doing every day. Raids you're doing every single day. So making sure that you are comfortably com uh, placing where your alliance is. So if your alliance is on Ultima 7.5, having a team that could uh, beat whatever lane you're in for Ultima 7.5 and whatever Greek lane you're in. Uh, yes, having teams that you can comfortably beat these without using a lot of raid health. After that is when I start to work on war offense. So 
uh supernatural will probably be a good war offense team if you're combining it with hella uh and it, it depends on what you're facing in war as well so hybrid teams seem to be working on uh to be the thing now because of there's there's only 18 teams that you pretty much need for war and there's a lot more teams than 18 so hybrid teams can are kind of dominating but uh yes so war offense and then after that war defense and then any other luxury fun projects that i want to work on but that's that's how i prioritize hopefully that helps you uh so arena teams first that's what that's what you should focus on and for dark dimension three focus on characters that you're also bringing in dark dimension four so you can kill two birds with one stone all right hey valley currently working my way through dark dimension three current plan is to continue to dark dimension three with my 11 characters at gear 14 waiting on five more gear 14 uniques for carnage 11 more for hella to help me get 13 characters which is five global, five cosmic, three sims for bio. So I should be good to get through Dark Dimension 3 with that. My predicament is that I'm stuck deciding between building teams to get through Doom campaign on Doom 2-1 or building for Dark Dimension 4. Is it necessary to three-star most of the Doom campaign to farm the gear for Dark Dimension 4? Or should I save the investment in Doom campaign and focus on the DD4 tunes? So uh, I think it is... Uh, uh, so. I, I talked about the teams that I or the way I think you should build. I think one of the more important things rather than arena team and stuff is to make sure that you could finish all these campaigns. Uh, you may not specifically need it for Dark Dimension 4, but uh, to have these gears, these gear pieces, there's a lot of those uh, mini uniques to get characters from 13 to 14 in those Doom campaigns. So I would try to get characters, uh, finish all the campaigns. That way you could access farming shards and the gear. Uh, so that I think should be your number one priority and then and then what I said for the previous question then arena teams then raid teams and all that but uh, yes go for the doom campaigns I think it's I think you're you're gonna be missing out on some of those mini 14 uniques for that if you if you don't pass that so get that going uh, I think you should be good for dark dimension three but uh, I don't I don't think that should be mutually exclusive there should there could be uh, characters that you're planning on taking in dark dimension four that will also help you to get through these doom campaigns so uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, hopefully that streamlines your uh, farming process and makes it easier for you. Uh, but that, that, I would I would go for the Doom campaign first. If you guys have any uh, different opinions, let me know in the comments. Let me know why uh, and if, if if you disagree with me. All right, uh, Valley, love your channel, especially when you do work with other content creators like OMG, Tony, Skin Geely. Quick question, completely Dark Dimension 3, first run. Thinking of bringing up Red Guardian, 5 yellow, 4 red, which I thought would work well with ghost any ideas if he's okay for dark dimension 3 or will he get uh blown up like everybody else dark dimension 3 is rough dark dimension 3 is rough uh red guardian is a good character just th just thinking back on dark dimension 3 i don't i don't see him being as one of my top choices for there now for the doom raids then yeah i think i think he's one of the best skill characters in the game uh it's 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 like taking drax into dark dimension 3 i i don't think drax would be very good there He's like a better version of Drax to give you some protection. So I wouldn't focus on him. And especially for Dark Dimension 4, he takes a lot of those gear 15 mini uniques. He's going to be a very expensive character. So a couple reasons I would probably hold off on Red Guardian. But you're, you're going to eventually need him once you go to these uh, the skill lanes of Doom. So wouldn't be the worst investment. But I think you could focus on uh, other characters. You could prioritize other characters before Red Guardian, uh, making sure uh yeah you're, you're in those global sections before dark dimension 3 phoenix phoenix is one of the best dark dimension 3 characters out there uh ghost is working very well uh mr sinister not as good in dark dimension 3 but it's awesome in dark dimension 4 so that's another character that you might want to bring go for the global lanes of dark dimension 3 and then uh then there's ultron who is good outside of dark dimension but not not so good in dark dimension because of his cooldowns if you can manage to ma if you could manage his cooldowns well He'll perform very well but uh sometimes he just dies and his cooldowns are offset and then uh, the next the next few days you're, you're spent trying to get his cooldown set so you could have a decent ultron run again but uh, those those are some good uh things off that i could think of off the top of my head for dark dimension 3 so hopefully that helps but i i don't think i would recommend red garden for dark dimension 3 but if anybody has taken him in there specifically and uh will recommend him let me know in the comments uh, hey valley thanks for putting out great content regularly my question relates to dark dimension 4 prep all right i love it currently struggling through the cosmic note with thanos proxima midnight minerva mordo silver surfer be ready to help shortly all right this sounds sounds very much like my team 
Uh, except I took uh, I took Longshot instead of Mordo. I have my team set first city. Symbiote, Spider-Man, Scream, Anti-Venom, Carnage, and Night Nurse. That is exactly the team I'm running in uh, city right now. Three to four nearly completed for the legendary section. I mean, Moth, Phoenix, and Doc Ock, you, your, your, your team sound very like, 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 very much like my Dark Dimension 4 team. Due to RNG, I seem to have an excess of tech gear 15 pieces. I'm not, I'm um, contemplating taking my six red star Star Lord to gear 15 to use those uniques uh, with the sole pur purpose of feeding energy to Ebony Maw to fill that fourth legendary slot. Could you advise on if this is a decent strategy uh, who are some better legendary options to take to that uh, fourth spot? If not Starlord, then who should I get uh, gear 15 minis for? Uh, Minerva, Ghost, Doc Gok are all gear 15 already. Thanks for all you do for the community. So uh, I was actually thinking of taking Shuri into that spot. Uh, my original choice, and I'm still going with her, but it, it's going to be Jubilee. But I was thinking I would not get all the mutant pieces in time. So as a backup, I had Invisible Woman, who I heard is very, very good in Dark Dimension 4. And Shuri as another backup because Invisible Woman takes Bio. Shuri will take that tech. So you, you can go with either of those. I, my, I'm going to go with Jubilee. But uh, yes, you get some benefits. Now, the main thing that I want you to focus on is uh, the characters that you can use after you're done with Dark Dimension 4. Because there are some characters that might make it easy. I heard Invisible Woman makes it a lot easier in those legendary nodes. But... Uh, are you going to use these characters after that? Because once you're done with those two runs of Dark Dimension 4, uh, most people aren't going to go back and try to get that more uh, cool border around their uh, avatar. So uh, focus focus on the characters that I think are going to give you benefit outside of that. If you're going to use Star-Lord in many game modes after Dark Dimension 4, then yes. I, I do like that energy strategy, but I don't want, I don't want to, uh, I wouldn't want to bring a character just for one strategy now i did that with uh i did that with saber tooth but saber tooth is super super cheap star lord is kind of expensive and uh if you're gonna get a lot of use outside of it then i say go for it uh but if not then even if this is a viable strategy for dark dimension 4 i would still avoid it and try to think more long term with your roster brother and that is it for the questions this week hopefully you guys have a great sunday hopefully you enjoy the rest of your weekend uh, if you want to get your question potentially featured on an upcoming episode of the Monday or Sunday, a lot of times mailbag, uh, make sure you join the Discord server and go to that mailbag channel. Leave your questions there. I appreciate everyone that left a question, whether it got answered or not. Uh, some some go long. So uh, that's, that's uh, yes, I try to fit in as many as, as, as possible. But thank you guys for leaving questions. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Uh, check out some of my other videos before you go. Make sure you subscribe and like and share this with your friends and everything. And uh, yes, check out some of the sponsors down below. Obviously Raid, but also Amazon Coins to get some up to 20% off your purchases. Worldwide Nutrition, up to 25% off your purchases there with the uh, link down below. And of course, Blue Stacks, my emulator choice. I'll see you guys next time. Give me a whole fist bump before you go, guys, and have a great weekend. Valley flying out.